Hello everyone, my name is Fajar Purnama. I'm a student from the Graduate School of Science and Technology, Kumamoto University. And on this video, I would like to present a journal paper which in, is entitled Peer Assessment of Web Page Design Behavior Sequential Analysis Based on Eye Tracking Evidence. So, in one of my class um, called Multimodal Informational Processing, led by the Professor Suyoshi Usagawa, I was in my first test, I was asked to select a paper which is related to the concept, contents of multimedia information and universal design concepts as well as psychological aspect of human visual audio perfection a, a journal paper that is related to these topics and I was asked to make a presentation and to make a video so I chose this journal paper which the title peer assessments of web page design is related to those topics but what most interests me in this journal paper is the eye tracking evidence which is one of my uh, research interests and if you click on the link here you can uh, from the slide that I will share to you in a separate link it will lead to the link to the paper which is here and so this paper is about peer assessment, eye tracking, region of interest, hotspots, and serial behavior um, based on the keywords that they presented. And this is the authors of this paper which is not related to me but yeah. But still I want to present this paper. And uh, this journal, the journal paper can be located in the 2018 Educational Technology and Society, Volume 21, Number 2, page 305 to 321. Now, let's get started. So, the outline of this presentation is as common, which is introduction, literature review, method, result, discussion, and conclusion based on the structure of the paper so let's start with the introduction so peer assessments is where peers grade assessments or the tests if you look at this illustration for example if you experience this in a class or not maybe you have that your your friend is asked to evaluate your work or maybe you are the one who is asked to evaluate or check your friend's work. That is a peer assessment. And a discussion happens and both of you gain understanding and metaconnective knowledge. So it's popular because it saves the teacher's time. While you do a lot of the work compared to the evaluating peer assessment where the teacher do all of the work. So by, yeah, by doing a peer assessment, the teacher need to only highlight the parts that you miss which is not so much i think but the issue of the issue of fair peer assessment is the quality and the fairness of the assessment due to attitudes background confidence and experience and the solution some literature say is to derive a new teaching style by studying the learning behavior and psychological aspects of the students. So as I said before that the solution is to study the learning behavior. Though on this research they argue that there are few or almost no studies at all relating to analyzing behaviors during peer assessments. So this is what the their research wanted to do so the object is a peer assessment on a web design is not on any other topic so limited to here and the study is a peer assessment comparison between the student and the experts in addition they provide a scientific data which is an eye tracking data to evaluate further the peer assessment result of the students. So
So before going to the main part of this uh, presentation, I put an extra slide called the literature review because I think that we may need some knowledge before we tackle the main section head on. So here is about the learning where there is a peer assessment here. I I may have made a long explanation of the introduction, but here I add some benefits, which is it improves knowledge, learning performance and motivation, social interaction and understanding. And there is a learning behavior, which is how you learn stuff that today it can be recorded due to the advance of the e-learning technology. And this data can be used to analyze the learning performance of students. And then there are different learning styles, which are students who are more active rather than more reflective. There are students who rely on sensing or those who rely on intuitive and those who rely on visual like animations, videos, pictures, etc. Or those who are more verbal who likes to learn better to descriptions and explanations and those who are more sequential they need to learn a bit by bit in based on timeline and those who are global who tackle the problem head-on and this journal paper they focus more on the visual style learning so the next knowledge that we need to gain is about the eye tracking so eye tracking is mostly used to see how people are reading the article, text, newspaper and so ever or how they see things. So it can use for many analysis. The eye tracking mainly contains two variables. One is the fixation, which is the eye stopping in certain information to retrieve the information, to learn stuff. And there is the second, which is the eye movement or pattern. And the eye gaze is found that is related to the attention. If we know the uh, how someone gaze, we can know how they pay attention to things. And if we know how they pay attention to things, we can know their cognition, meaning what they may have learned. So here the eye tracking is used to explore the difference between learning behaviors. Now we can go to the method section. So the participants of the experiments are 49 visual style learning students, 20 to 21 years old, which I think they are college students, 21 female and 21, 28 male. And on the first table, the you can see that there is a website A, website B, website C, and website D, which has been already been evaluated by the expert using the Kelly repertory grid score. So this is a reference to compare the evaluation which is done by students and the evaluation which is done by experts. Now on the bottom is the reviewer distributions. So website A is 10 who give a high number of their number of students who give a high scores for website A, B, C, and D, and their students who give a low scores from A, B, C, and D, and these are the numbers. Here is shown the peer assessment rating scale table, where it, it is handed out to the students to evaluate the website. So they will evaluate whether the website is very good, whether it's good, bad, or very bad, and these are the score items the items of the assessment and based on the journal paper the kappa consistency is 0 0.903 mm, basically it means that this score item is well designed and which is good to be used consistent to be used and the next one is the counterbalance design for hangover and tiredness I'll explain more on the next slide so this is how the experimental of the activity work. So they control the learning style of the participants and participants only the visual style. So on the first round, group one will do uh, will do website A and website B. Group two will do an eye tracking on website C and website D. And the second round of eye tracking, group one will do. C and D and group 2 will do A and B and finally 
they will fill in the questionnaire of the peer assessment attitude and this picture this image shows the in experimental environment where they they have an eye tracking tool which is a anti and u 180 chip multi-screen eye tracker equipped with an infrared LED detection of eye gaze sampling frequency of 30 and 180 hertz 64 67 centimeter range and an error rate of 0 0.3 degrees but they are equipped with a nine point correction techniques now let's move to the result of this journal paper the first result is about the consistency between the expert versus the students so for example on website a and the text of website a there is a 75 percent consistency of the assessment result compared to between the student and the expert so 75 percent of the student gave the same re assessment result as the expert while the other 25 percent gave a different result to the expert there this first table is the data of their result which I'm not going to point one by one due to the time constraint I would like to summarize the, the result of this table and so overall so for everything the consistency is about 50 percent and overall in average the consistency level is above 70 percent so the journal paper said it's a good thing and here they, it's a provided about the positive attitude as well they are sending an action and the negative attitude but I would like to skip this part and because there are more interesting results on the next section so on this section of the result that I am most interested in because the eye movement can actually determine a website whether it is a uh, well designed or poorly designed now let's go straight for the figure the first figure this first figure is website a there is the menu the heading there is the title the heading and the content and the left side is the behavior sequential analysis of the eye movement so there are arrows arrows from one region of interest for example from the title to the heading meaning that uh, how much the constant shows that how much time the students are spending while moving from one region of interest to another so the higher the constant or the value the harder more the time the student spends and this loop value meaning that how much the students are spending for example on t11 how much they spend uh, examining the title and the constant is a uh, and the arrow is bold and is the value is large meaning that the students are spending a lot of time on this title page so website a is the best why because there are less cross movement between region of interest so ideally the students shouldn't take much time to move from one region of interest to another they should take a quick time and there shouldn't be many arrows in other words there shouldn't be many arrows and the, the value should be small that is a good website and they should spend more fixation on the region of interest meaning that they should spend more time reading the contents rather than moving from one places to another and let's see website B. Website B is ranked third and is not too good. Why? Because there are many cross movements. There are many arrows and the values are a lot. Meaning that they are spending more time moving from one region of interest to another. Maybe they are confused. Maybe they cannot find the information that they need, that they want, or so ever. And uh, website C is the worst because while wow, there are so many arrows even compared to 
website B, I think. But it's clear that website A have only a few arrows, while website C have too many arrows, meaning that the students are moving around from places to another. If they spend more time moving place from one place <coughs> to another, meaning that they spend less time reading the content itself, the important information. And that's why it's ranked the worst. Well, on figure for website D, there are minimal movements from one region of interest to another and they, sp they spend more fixation on the content of region of interest. So which is a good website, but website A is the best. Now this next slide is about the difference in eye movement from those who give a high score and a low score. This one is for website B. For so the difference in behavior is shown when moving from the title to the menu and how they look within the menu and how they move from the content to the menu and from the title to the content on 332 and, and this is how it is but I found it more interesting on the heat map below so this is how the students heat map fixation or how they see on for those who gave a high score so they are concentrated on the text on the background and to see whether it good or not and they concentrate more on the menu so this kind of an eye gaze fixation of uh, students who give a high score and on another side this is how the heat map fixation of how the students who gave a low scores mm, there's no need there's no much for me who need to say you can see that the students are wandering around in chaos they cannot find the information that they are looking for or they are confused and maybe in the end they give up so so not many heat map and they just give a low scores so it's interesting that there is a different pattern of those who give a low scores and a high score Next, let's move to the discussion section of the journal paper. Well, frankly saying on this slide, I just summarize what I've read in points. So the first point is that there is a clear and because there is a consistency in peer assessment because the rubrics are clear and understandable. So having a clear and understandable rubric is very important. And the diversity of materials it is found that it, it affects the assessments uh, assessment result from the eye tracking data the student tends to give higher scores when met with unfamiliar web designs therefore the diversity of examples should be increased from the heat map it was found that the students had better concentration on website a due to the clear design from the heat map it was found that students had a website b and C were evaluated purely because the students cannot focus on the information. So these are what I explained on the previous result section. And now to conclude this presentation, so the authors of the journal paper, they introduced a triangulated evaluation. They tried to evaluate the peer assessment or the quality of the student assessment um, in comparison to the to the assessments by experts and they analyze the peer assess the peer assessment using the eye tracking data so this is what you call a triangulate and the conclusion says that the analysis provides more scientific evidence the eye tracking data to better understand the peer assessment process so that the reliability and the validity of the peer assessment could be enhanced. The results indicated that the students giving higher and lower scores had different eye movements. The eye tracking behavior, behavioral records of peer assessments provided the students with additional important feedback 
for designing a website which this is the it, the most interesting part for me of the conclusion which I told you on the result thank you